Hi, I'm Dr. Jared Gardner, and today I'm going to show you a kind of cool incidental finding. Uh, this was from a foot amputation specimen. The patient had previously had a toe amputation, and there was a lot of scar and reactive change in addition to gangrene and necrosis and acute osteomyelitis bone infection. But in the background, soft tissue um, in the amputation specimen, I found this. And you can see here there's multiple uh, multinucleated giant cells, and they are of the foreign body type. They're foreign body giant cells, and they are aggregated around little fragments of uh, pale, almost clear material. And this is foreign material. So I wanted to show this just so that you can recognize uh, what foreign body giant cell reaction or foreign body granulomas look like. It's a, a granuloma is a combination of histiocytes, sometimes with giant cells. There are a bunch of different types of granulomas, but in this case, the granuloma here is forming because there's foreign material in the soft tissue in the body and the immune system does not like that. All right, so um, this is when I'm looking at a glass slide. This is a picture I've taken. Um, with my microscope and uh, one thing we have is a condenser on a lot of light microscopes so when you flip that it helps make the the light brighter at a higher magnification so a lot of the times we use that uh, keep that flipped on when we're at higher magnification to make the slides look better but when you're taking photos sometimes or even when you're just looking at the slides sometimes flipping the condenser off can be helpful here's an example when I flip the condenser off it makes these these structures stand out as way more three dimensions dimensional. So anytime there's something that has kind of three dimensions or a sharp border or contrast, particularly foreign material, or sometimes if you're looking at the epidermis and you want to see the outlines of keratinocytes, um, flip the condenser off and it will make it stand out more. So um, I love digital pathology and digital slides, but this is one thing that as far as I know, digital slide scanners don't offer. And as a dermatopathologist, I encounter foreign material often in the skin and in the dermis and soft tissue. So I'm often flipping my condenser back and forth to help me see foreign material, especially if there's a lot of granulomas around. And uh, this is a great example of the foreign material. Now, what is this material? I'm not 100% sure. I suspect it's actually cotton fibers. Um, these little U-shaped or squished oval shapes. Sometimes if you cut them in a different direction, you can see they're longitudinal kind of uh, hollow fibers. They're refractile, pale to clear. And if you use a polarizing uh, filter, polarizable filter, they will glow and be birefringent um, under polarized light examination. So um, the uh, this is uh, cotton fibers are used in gauze, bandage material, and all sorts of other stuff. So I suspect this patient, because they had had uh, surgery, they've had a variety of open wounds over quite a long time. Probably at some point in time, gauze or bandage material was pushed down into one of the wounds or draining sinuses from their osteomyelitis and gangrene. And a bit of that got stuck down in the tissue and embedded and kind of scarred around it. And then the giant cell reaction uh, came around it as well. So that's, I think, what happened. I don't know 100% for sure, but um, we did, a, a my colleagues and I wrote a paper, uh, Mickey Lindsay and Sagar Vishal and Sarah Shalin, some of my former colleagues and trainees, we wrote a paper together about common uh, foreign exogenous material that you find, particularly in skin biopsies and what the shapes and characteristics of those are. So I'll put a link to that paper uh, down in the video description. So let's look at some more pictures. Here's another closer view, again, without the condenser flipped and you can see the really nice multinucleated giant cells. So this one where they make a ring almost looks like a Teuton giant cell, which is another type of giant cell that we see in things like juvenile xanthogranuloma, for example. But Teuton giant cells not only have a ring of nuclei, they usually have a little uh, outer layer of foamy, vacuolated xanthomatous cytoplasm, and we don't see that here. So when you see giant cells that have lots of nuclei, particularly if the nuclei are all pushed over to one side, and especially if there's a piece of foreign material there, uh, that's a foreign body giant cell. Sometimes you have to see the foreign material to know that it's a foreign body type giant cell. All right, so then here's a view of that same area. Uh, where I flip the condenser again just to show that three-dimensional refractile nature. This is what we call refractile. If it looks, if it looks like it has three dimensions, kind of stands out from the rest of the tissue, um, it, that's refractile. And flipping the condenser can help you see that. So a few more uh, pictures, even closer view. If you're not bored already, I'll, I'll. Uh, if you've already, if you're still watching this, I guess you're not too bored. And so here we are. And then here's what it looks like if you flip, the, if you put in uh, two polarizable filters, 
um, into the microscope and slowly turn. It takes a little bit of practice to adjust the light levels on the microscope to capture this, especially if you have a microscope that has an auto exposure. So if you're a pathologist trying to get pictures of polarized material and you can't figure it out, turn off the automatic exposure button on your camera and then manually adjust the light levels, the exposure level, and the way you have the condenser rotate or the um, polarizing filter rotated. So play around with those things and that will help you uh, to get the, uh, the capture right. But if you have an automatic exposure, it'll just white out and it won't, it won't let you get this bright light here. It'll try to correct for that. So anyway, uh, it took me a little while to figure that out. So hopefully that saves some of you some time. And there's another look. So this material, if this is cotton, cotton often stains with a GMS, Gamora methanamine silver. So if you're having a bad day, you could maybe get this confused with fungus. Now, once you've seen fungus, you know that I'm not aware of any fungus that infects humans that has this kind of look. But if you just had a tiny fragment of it and you saw it in a giant cell and you thought of infection and you did a, a GMS or maybe a PAS stain, sometimes these things can light up on those special stains and cause confusion with fungus when in fact it's actually foreign material. So the lessons here are just what a foreign body granuloma looks like. Um, foreign body granuloma is formed to all sorts of different exogenous or foreign material in the body. And um, sometimes even a material the body makes, like calcifications or or keratin debris from a ruptured cyst or hair follicle, it will produce a foreign body reaction. Even though that material is not technically foreign, once it's down in the dermis or the soft tissue, the body doesn't like it. It's supposed to be on the outside of the basement membrane, uh, not inside the actual uh, dermis or inside the body itself. So anyway, um, don't be uh, afraid to use your polarizer if you see giant cells and granulomas, especially in or near the skin where it's common to find foreign material. Sometimes finding foreign material can answer the question about what actually caused the case. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that uh, little uh, short uh, kind of fun case. Uh, nothing uh, too exciting, but I thought it would be kind of cool to show, especially since I got nice pictures with the uh, polarized uh, biofringents that we're seeing here. All right. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day.